So far what we've done is we've colored our girl with markers from the back and now here on the front we're ready to do color pencils, mixed media, and final inking. Now that we're ready for color pencils, what I like to do is start at the top of the drawing and then I'll work my way down to the bottom. Now for this girl, what we're going to do is we're going to do another variation of blonde hair. Now if you recall, we did another variation of blonde hair when we did her white dress shirt with denim. For this blonde hair from the back, I used a light sand for all of her flesh tone and then I also put light sand in her hair and then some craft brown in all the shadow areas. Back here from the front of the drawing we used a lot of white color pencil and some cream as well as a little bit of the darker brown and then finished it with inking. Now when we take a look at the back for this girl, basically I was getting her hair wet with the colorless blender and then I was hitting some craft brown in the dark areas and light sand in the light areas. And the difference is, is because I used the clear blender first, it got the paper nice and wet so I didn't have to add as much color to this. So now when we come back and look at it here from the front, she already looks very blonde and I won't have to use a whole lot of white color pencil. So what I want to do is I want to come in and test out a few of my different color pencils and figure out which one do I want for my dark, my mid-tone, and my highlights. Of course, I already know that I, my lightest highlights is going to be just pure white, but I also might want to use a little bit of some kind of a cream or yellow. Now I can come in here and make my decisions on what I want for a mid-tone as well as my dark tone and then I'll use white for my highlights. Okay, now that we have our low light, mid-tone, and our highlight, I want to get my pencils really sharp. Usually blonde hair is very thin and wispy and so you're going to want to have your pencils super sharp for this. Also, get out a reference photo, so while you're coloring this in, look really closely at that photo for exactly where you want to put your uh, low lights and highlights and midtones. Okay, so in previous videos, we went into a lot more depth on how to color for hair. So in this video, I'm going to just move through this really quickly. So to start off, what I'm going to do is, using my darkest color, I'm going to come into all the dark areas and just start to bring out these fine little hairs into the main body of her hair. And this is also helping me to make it dark behind her ears and her chin and her neck to separate out her hair from her face. Then at some point you're going to want to switch to your mid-tone and I'm using this almost in the same areas I just put all of my dark color pencil because I'm trying to tone down that darker brown. And then finally I'll come in and I'll switch to my white color pencil. And then depending on how blonde you want your girl to be, you'll either use a lot of white or just a little bit of white. So it's up to you as the designer. I also want to come in here on her face and I'm going to do just a couple little touch up spots and then add just a titch more pink on her lips. Alright, that looks good enough for now. What we need to do is we need to come in and start working on the dress. All right, so for this dress, there's three things going on. We have the sheer up here in the chest and sleeves area. And then we have the main body silk dress with the sequins on top. So what's going to happen is the bodice up here has both layers, the sequins and the main body. And then the drape skirt area down here, the, these two layers are separate, so the sequence is floating away and then the main body is a second separate layer. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to render the silk layer underneath and then we'll finish by doing the sequent layer on top. So that's one of the cool things about doing this project is you're going to learn how to actually render for silk as well as for sparkles. All right, let's start on the silk dress now. Taking the silk layer, I'm going to fold this in half and put a pin inside of here. And then what that does is it's going to let me see what does this trumpet fold look like. And that's basically the same thing that we're duplicating here down on the hem of her silk dress. So basically you can see it's going to be dark here inside the folded areas and then there's highlights here on the top edge of the trumpets. Now also keep in mind we have a light source coming from her right side. So we really want to get the trumpets a little more towards the right side of each fold and then the darker area is going to be here on the left side of the folds. We also want to find some color pencils to match. Now to test out these color pencils, what I want to do is I want to make a little swatch of the pink right here off to the side. From the back side, let's lay down a layer of the pink and then while it's semi-dry, semi-wet, let's throw in some shadows as if though we have that trumpet fold. And then I'm going to let this get bone dry and I'll come in and get my shadows one more time. And now that it's bone dry, I'm going to come back in here and hit it for a third time and get all of my cast shadows. Go ahead and do this now. All right, now looking back at this from the front, the first thing I want to do is I just want to see what color pencils I want to use. Now for sure I'm going to use white because white works great on anything that's silky or glossy. And I'll come in here and I'll just see if there's any other mid-tones that I like. So here I can see that the creamy color doesn't really show up at all. This pale pink is basically just the same exact color. But this pink here where it's kind of a hot pink, that one looks really good for probably my shadows. And if I need to get a little darker, I don't like the red, but I do like kind of this deep reddish, which has still a little bit of yellow in it. So I'm gonna choose these two as well as my white. All right, so sharpen your pencils. And what we're going to do is we're going to have nothing behind this, so no texture, no sandpaper or anything, because silk is so smooth. Now sometimes you could give silk a little bit of a texture by having your lightest sandpaper, so like 120 grit or even 200 grit, and give it a little bit of this sparkle shine to it if you want. For me, I'm going to opt to not do any of the texture because later on we're going to put the sequence layer on top. All right, so get your pencils nice and sharp and get your silk set up so we could see one trumpet coming down. And then we'll do some practice on this. So basically, the middle of it is the shiniest part. So you're going to have some nice, clean, beautiful white right here. Then if I skip to my darkest tone, we want to come in and we're going to get this shadow right up against that. And I'm going to leave this edge sharp and then I'm going to start fading this out onto the rest of the fabric. So I'm fading this out onto the rest of the fabric and I'm letting it blend away. But you want to keep somewhat of a sharp line here to show you that there's a high contrast. Now, for my mid-tone, if I feel like that dark is a little too dark, I can come in here and tone it down with my mid-tone and also bring back in some of that pink layer.
Now that's using my darkest of the mid-tones. Here I have kind of just this bubblegum pink. What I'm going to do is try it on this other side. So again, I'm going to start with a nice sharp edge and then I'll fade that out onto the rest of the fabric. And I think we can come in and make this white even a little bit brighter. And then if you feel like your trumpet kind of has like a secondary color inside of the, the actual folds, you could come in and just throw a little bit of your mid-tone and then hit it back down with your highlights. But the key thing is, is to have a nice clean white area where all of the light is reflecting back to your eye. Now when I look at this, so here was our dark with the um, bubblegum pink, and then here's our dark using the red. For sure this red is way too dark, and it's starting to look like actual red color, and I want it to stay pink. So the formula I'm going to use is these two color pencils for doing my trumpets. Alright, so let's try it here now on your dress. Okay, so moving through this, what I'm doing is I'm taking the highlights, down from the hem and as I come up towards the waist I'm curving into the waist. So on each side of the dress the curve is doing the opposite. And then I'm going to switch here to my mid-tone or low light and I'm going to come in and I'm going to get all my shadows first and I'll step back look at it and then if I want to I can come back and darken it in even more. But be careful, you don't want to get too dark with your shadows, or else then it'll start to look like a darker dress. So for me, this is supposed to look like a light pink. All right, so now we can get a good sense of, here's the highlights on the top part of the trumpets, and then we have the shadows here inside where the folds would be. Now this bodice piece here is made out of the same fabric, so the under layer is the silk fabric. So I need to use some of the same colors up in this area so they match perfectly. Okay, so basically I'm going to just do the same thing again, but this time we're doing our shaping and coloring for her bust apex and then a little bit down on her rib cage and her stomach. Once I switch to my shadow color, then I'm going to come in and I want to shadow underneath the bust and then on the sides of her bodice as well as a little bit on the opposite side of the darts and the center front seam, if you have a center front seam. Now I also want to tone this down a little bit by just smoothing it with my finger. And this is going to help to just blend the colors and make it look really smooth and shiny and silky and soft. And make sure before you do this that your hands are clean and dry so you're not rubbing too much of your natural oils into the drawing. Now if I was truly just making a silk dress, the last thing that I would do is I would take out my sandpapers, I would come in here and I would, fall, I would find the grit that's somewhere around 120 or even all the way up to 200. And again, this is going to be the sandpaper that is very lightweight. And I would put it behind here, and then I would come and I would hit some white, basically all the way through, and then just a little bit of my middle tone. And what's that going to do is it's going to give it a little bit of some kind of a sparkly, textury feel to it. And that'll match closely with the silk, especially, for instance, this silk here which kind of has that uh, charmeuse or even like a Georgette weave, it will have some of that sparkle in there. So normally that's what I would do to finish this as a silk dress and then I would start inking it. 
Now, since we're gonna come back and we're gonna add this sparkle layer on top of that, we don't need to go and do all that extra work to make it look like it's a silk dress. For the most part, we just want it to look silky underneath the sparkle layer. So we've already accomplished that. Now we're ready to move on to the next part. Let's talk about what you should do here for the sheer layer on her chest and sleeves. Now, if this sheer was made out of just a plain silk sheer, basically I wouldn't really do much more to it. I might come in and get just a little bit of some shadowing just to separate out the sleeve from the chest area and also keeping in mind where the, the uh, spotlight is coming from this side. So maybe just a little bit of some color pencil, but not too much. Now if I had a sheer like this, basically this is so thin that it's not really doing a whole lot in the sense of shadows. So at this stage here, I would just come in and I would start doing a technique for having these little white flowers all the way across. Now the sheer that I'm gonna use, it's kind of a net, right? So this looks like tulle, but it's very soft on your skin and it has these little tiny sparkles inside of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a technique where I'm going to make this look like it's a tool by literally putting some tool behind this and then I can come back from the front and get that texture onto the sheer front. Now here you can see I'm transferring the tool texture to the front of the paper to give it that tool look. But if you feel like that this tool is so small, it's hard to get it to transfer, what you can do is choose different sizes. Now when we're using tool, there's different thicknesses of the tool and different shapes and sizes of the weave itself. So for instance, this tool here has a little bit of a stiffness to it and a very small weave to it. And then we take a look at this one. This one has a larger open weave and a lot less stiffness as well. So what I'll do is I'll put the smaller one under here first and we'll transfer this to the front. And already you can see the texture a lot better. And then now this is the largest size of the tool. And in my opinion, that one's getting too big. The tool itself is just too large, too open. I really like this texture here from the middle size one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose to use this tool on the front of her chest and sleeves. So I have my tool here behind my drawing and I'm making sure that the tool behind here goes all the way past what I need. And I'm gonna use my mid-tone as well as my highlight. Now the light source is here on her right side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the sleeves. And again, I'm using this, the flat edge of my pencil. And I'll come in here and I'll start getting the tool texture and I'm not pressing very hard because I don't want to color this white I just want the little ridges from the tool now once I get over here to the shadow side I can come in with my darker mid-tone and I'll get this tool texture So now you can see here, I use the darker pencil on this side of her body, and I use my white highlights on this side of the body. Now if we take a look at this tool, it also has all these little sparkles in there, but if I were to go in and try to do some kind of little tiny sparkles or something, it's just gonna look like polka dots. So realistically, this is finished. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provide this swatch along with the drawing and, 
and the sample sewer will know that this is that sheer fabric at the top. The next thing I want to do is I want to get these sparkles not only on the bodice but also the full drape of her skirt. Now how this fabric is is it's see-through so you can see the corner of the blue paper behind it through the fabric itself. Basically what this is is there's a very soft mesh fabric in the back that's totally see-through and then there's a machine that stitches on all of the sequins on top of this. Now what I want to do is for the base of this I'm going to continue using this technique of transferring the tool onto my drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to make sure it's large enough to cover everything for the bodice of her dress and the skirt of her dress and I'm going to put it here behind my drawing. Now I want to make sure that tool never moves once I start transferring off. So I have my paper taped down to the tabletop and once I put this on top I'm going to hold it so nothing shifts around at all and I'm going to come in and start doing the exact same technique I did here with whites in my highlight areas and then a little bit of the pink, darker pink in the low light areas. Now as I color this on here, this time I'm pressing a lot harder than I did for the shear at her chest area. And the reason I'm pressing harder is because I want this layer to look like it's on top of the silk dress because that's actually what it is in real life. Once I move through the highlight areas and I come in down to the low light areas, then I'll switch to my darker pencil. Also for the areas where my white color pencil isn't really showing through, I can come in and hit those with the darker pencil and you can see the texture really well. Now as you do this, you're going to want to make sure that you're coloring on top of her skin that goes behind this sheer layer. Now, as we finish up this technique, you can really see that this sheer layer is on top of all of the silk layer. Now, as I come here and look at this one last time, I just want to make sure that I've covered every square inch of what is going to be the sparkle layer. As soon as you pull this tool out of here, you'll never be able to put it back in the same spot and you'll never be able to do this technique again. So just make sure you love it before you decide that you're totally done. Basically what we're looking for is you want it to feel like this piece of fabric here is the same piece of fabric all the way across to there and it's on top of the silk layer. Alright, so I feel like I'm good to go so I'm going to take my tool out of here. All right, so let's take a closer look at this. The top layer here is going to be this very fine tulle fabric that's extremely soft and supple all across the top and her sleeves. And then once we move down into the bodice, it's going to have the sparkle sheer layer on top as well as the main dress all the way from side to side from the waist down to the hem is going to be the sparkle fabric. And you can see now the technique where we've covered completely over on top of the silk layer. So that's why we didn't go into very much detail on the silk layer. And also you'll never ink any of this silk underdress. You'll never ink it because you want it to look like it's behind the sheer layer on top. Now if you were making a dress where it had the silk layer behind and just a sheer layer on top, basically you're done and you're ready to just ink the very outside edges of this dress.
For my example, we're going to be using the shear plus the sparkle sequence. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Now, the technique that we just used on top of her dress, that color pencil is very fragile at this point. If I were to come in here with a cloth and try to clean this off, I'm actually going to start smearing all of that around. So be sure not to do that. If you need to, you can shake off some of the color pencil that we just used. Or if you have some kind of a brush, like from cleaning your camera lens or doing makeup, you can come in here and just brush a few little spots if you see some of the uh, color pencil dust is still on there. All right, so before we finish doing all of the sparkles on top of the dress, we're gonna actually ink it first and then do this, the sequins on top. Let's come down here and let's talk about her shoes. All right, so for doing the silver shoes, take out your cool gray number two, as well as if you have a silver metallic color pencil, and then your black and white color pencil. Also be sure to double check and read that it sh for sure says black because there's a lot of dark purples, dark greens, and indigo blues that look black until you start coloring. So just double check that. Now what we're gonna do is let's put a test swatch of some cool gray number two here so we can practice doing our silver. All right, so let's come back here to the front side of the paper. What we're gonna do is we're gonna practice a few different techniques for doing a shiny metallic looking silver shoe. Now, if you do have some tool fabric to use, we don't wanna have the large one or the medium sized one. But if you have a tool that's super tiny, little micro tool, something like this, we can try that. As well, we're also gonna try using our sandpaper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my smallest tool that I have, and I'm putting it behind my gray swatch. And I'm gonna come in here with my black color pencil just to see if it's picking up some of that texture. Now, it is picking up a little bit of the texture, but also keep in mind, we don't have very much room on these little tiny shoes. So I feel like this is not quite enough. Let's try some sandpaper. So I'm gonna try this now with using my 80 grit. So here's my white. Over here I'll do some black. And just for fun, I have a um, metallic silver color pencil. We'll see how that looks for kind of a mid-tone. And even though it's a metallic silver, I don't know if that really does anything. I just need to decide which one I want to use for my shadows. Now me personally, I really like to have white and black touching each other and that helps make something look real sparkly. I'm also going to try my sandpaper that's 120 grit. So I think I like that one the best. Now over here is my light source. What I'm going to do is start with my darks here on this side of the shoes and then I'll finish with white on the other side. And sometimes the white color pencil will start to make the black color pencil disappear. So then I'm gonna come back and just hit this one more time with some black just to make sure it's nice and dark in those shadow areas. Now later on after I come back and I'll ink these shoes, then I'll come in here with my white jelly roll and I'll just put a few more little spreckles and a couple little highlights on there. All right, at this point now, everything is done for doing markers and color pencil. I'm ready to come in here and start inking my girl and then we'll finish up with doing the sequins.